bands that used to write on their albums, no synthesizers on this record, now use them all the time. They have become a part of modern music pretty much to the same degree as drums and guitar and bass and piano. It, it's not unusual to have a synth. I don't think anyone raises an eyebrow if you've got a synth or synth keyboard players in your band anymore. So it's become, it seems to me anyway, it's become very much just part of the, the world of music now. When I started, it really wasn't like that at all. You know, I was shocked at the, some of the, the, the aggressive reactions against it. I, I, I don't know if you know, but for the, the first two or three years of my career, in, in, in Britain at least, the, the British Musicians Union tried to ban me. They, they said I was putting real musicians out of work, which was a bit insulting for a start. But the other thing was that, you know, the, I, I wasn't trying to create sounds that you could get on a violin. I'd have used a violin if I wanted that. I was trying to create sounds that you hadn't heard before. You know, that's the thing that attracted me to electronic music in the first place, the, the ability to create sounds and noises that no one had ever heard on this planet before. You know, that was exciting to come up with something that was just, you just think, what is that? You know, I've never heard anything like that before. You know, you know, that was the fun of it, and that's why you spent hours in front of these things twiddling to come up with those moments. So to say that I was putting real musicians out of work was ridiculous. You, you know, I, I had a, I had a six-piece band, you know, so I was employing quite a few, more than your average three-piece guitar band, that's for sure. And so it, it was ignorant, it was just ignorant, and there was a lot of that. <laughs>